Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Peace Lutheran Church. We are so glad to have you here joining us. Welcome to everyone who is right here in the sanctuary. We pray that you had safe travels here on some wet and rainy roads, and we give thanks to God for nourishing the earth through that. And we also say welcome to those of you who are joining us online from afar. We trust that the Holy Spirit gathers us together into one community in Jesus Christ, no matter where we might be. We're continuing our worship series called At Tension, focusing on the tensions in our scriptures and in our lives. And today we are thankful for Pastor Paul for bringing the message as we contemplate the tensions between hope and fear and searching for that hope in our lives. So you'll hear those themes come up all throughout our liturgy and our music and our preaching today. We do have communion today, and we have options for grape juice and gluten-free. Just make sure that you let your servers know if you need any of those substitutions. Know that all are welcome here to the table of Jesus Christ, and that you are welcome to participate at the table when it is time. Now, I like to take a moment here to always welcome visitors. Do we have any visitors this morning that feel comfortable waving so we can make sure to greet you? Well, good, we do have a few. Welcome. Make sure that you share some welcome there. And welcome back to all of you who have been here before. And also today, we have a time to bless our students who are departing for college. Did we get any college students here this morning? Oh, good, we sure did. Well, we will make sure to pray for those students as a part of our service. Later on, we'll ask you to come forward with your loved ones, and we will send you out with the blessing of our church community, as well as a blessing for all the students who are not here with us, but who we remember today. So let's take a moment here before we begin to turn to our neighbors and greet them warmly, sharing a word hey, of hey, welcome. Before you welcome one another, just one quick thing. I don't know if you saw it, but we're welcoming Pastor Jonathan back from his vacation with coffee cups in his office on every flat surface. You can buy one by either meeting me in the gathering place after worship or by Venmoing us using the word cups. Just give us the amount you typically spend on your favorite beverage and the money goes to buying an industrial strength basketball hoop for the parking lot to welcome our neighborhood kids. Shh, don't tell. They snuck that one in there. Well, we begin our service today just as we begin our lives as we gather at the font with the waters of baptism. Caught up in the many tensions of this world, let us come before God in a time of confession and forgiveness, seeking right relationship with God and with one another. Please join me. Lord God, our attention is drawn elsewhere than you. We seek to comfort ourselves rather than live into your holy tension. We prioritize our safety rather than seeking out your justice. We protect our freedom over the needs of others. We close our eyes to the evil that injures this world. We fail to care for our neighbors as well as ourselves. Forgive us, Lord God. Return our attention to you and your mission. Refocus our hearts and minds on Jesus, who teaches us your grace in abundance. Amen. Siblings, in Christ, hear God's promise anew. You are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are washed by the waters of baptism and refreshed for a newness of life. Receive now, once again, God's goodness, mercy, and forgiveness. Amen. In celebration of that good news, let us rise and sing our gathering hymn.
be seated. Let us pray together the words of our prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever and whenever you appear in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I'd like to invite the kids who are here to come on up for a chance for us to get to visit together. Yeah, it's your time. Come on up. There we go. Hey, and you can, yeah, that looks good. We will see. I'm going to talk a little bit about school. You have a few more years to come for school, but are you going to school this year? Yeah, what grade are you going to do? Kindergarten. And how about you? Sixth grade. And you, you are in love books. I can tell that right now. Well, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have kids. But uh, all my kids are, are, are big now. But when we first came to Sioux Falls, my oldest son was in second grade going to Oscar Howe. And I don't know if anybody are Oscar Howe people here, but... Anyway, uh, his mom was a stay-at-home mom, but on this particular day, I think she had to take kids to doctor's appointments or something, and I was, uh, was online to pick uh, my son Joel up from Oscar Howe when school was finished. Uh, well, let's just say that uh, uh, dear Mrs. Carbo, who was the secretary at Oscar Howe, uh, at some point, had to call the church and say, uh, Pastor Paul, you have a son here ready to get picked up. I had forgotten. And so then I started to think about what that must have been like for him, you know, having uh, expecting a mom or dad or somebody that he loved or trusted to be there, and nobody was showing up. Have you ever been kind of in a place like that where you, you, um, you didn't have people around you that you knew and you felt a little afraid? Maybe not yet. I, mean, I hope it never happens. Or like getting lost in a store and realizing I don't know where my mom or my dad is right now. That would be kind of scary too. But here's the deal. We're, all, we're talking about times we're afraid, but we're also talking about times uh, that get us through that when we're afraid and, and with the word hope. So I haven't asked him yet. I'm going to ask him today if he was afraid or if he just hoped that I was going to show up eventually, which I think was the case. But it would not have happened if Mrs. Carwell hadn't called Pastor Paul. So, you know what? I think that also is that when we are in places where we are afraid, God knows how to send people to uh, come and, and help take care of us. Now, Joel didn't know Mrs. Carbo, but Mrs. Carbo loved kids. And he was in a safe place even when his dad wasn't there on time. And, um, yeah. So he could, he could have hope that his dad would eventually show up, which I did. Or he could have hope that no matter what, God was still there taking care of him with people like Mrs. Carbo. So that's just something to think about if you're ever in a place where you're feeling a little afraid. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you've promised to be with us always. We thank you for the way you've been with these kids and for the way you have surrounded them with people who love them. Uh, help them when they are afraid to remember that you are right there and that uh, you will keep your promise never to leave them. All this we ask in your precious name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming up. I'll let you head on back. The reading for August 6th and 7th. Jesus encourages disciples to invest their hearts and live fully into God's reign. Instead of facing life with fear, those who know God's 
generosity are always ready to receive from God and to give to others. Luke 12, 32 through 40. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If the master comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'd like to let you know that about a week and a half ago, one of my brothers-in-law was struck, hit by a car while he was riding a motor uh, scooter. And the good news is he was wearing a helmet and, and did not suffer any brain injuries, but when he arrived at the hospital, uh, he uh, had lots and lots of broken bones and uh, two collapsed lungs and uh, blood pressure that was very, very low. That was 10 days ago. It's been uh, four or five surgeries have taken place since then. Still in the ICU, but uh, I I do believe he was having ice cream for breakfast yesterday. So I think that is a a good sign that he's on the mend, though it's going to be a a long road for him. So I invite you to keep him in your prayers. And I bring that up partly because it plays into our theme today. At our our staff meeting this past week, as we were talking about this weekend's theme of hope and fear being in tension, Pastor Alex observed that for her at least, those two emotions usually occur at the same time. And that's when it struck me that how true that was regarding my brother-in-law. There was a lot of fear that his body was too broken to survive. But there was a lot of hope that each hour and each day he was going to to make it and recover. So it got me thinking that we don't really, we can't get through this life without experiencing fear. That's just part of the human condition. But what a blessing it is when that fear can be experienced with hope as well, because hope is powerful. I have a story of hope um, in a little bit, but first I want to just look at that first sentence in the gospel that Darcy read uh, that I think spells it out. When Jesus was talking to his followers, he said, Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And what I like about that first sentence is that, well, first of all, he acknowledges that being human means uh, something about being afraid. And, uh, and hence his uh, do not be afraid. But then he gives us the reason for hope, namely the Father's love for us. And, of course, it's one thing for us to, you know, for us to know our reason for hope, but it's a whole other thing to be able to remember our reason for hope when we are in the middle of something very fearful. So in the news this past week, I read that former Los Angeles Lakers player Slava Medvedenko um, gave an interview a week ago on Sunday 
Medvin Dinkel was a power forward for the Lakers, uh, and he was on that championship team of 2001 and 2002, playing alongside uh, uh, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. And uh, those two championships earned him a, those uh, two highly coveted championship rings, which not every professional player is able to achieve. Now, Medvedenko is from Ukraine. His home is Ukraine. And he told a reporter last Sunday that he decided to sell his championship rings. And he made that decision after going to the roof of one of the tallest buildings in his Kiev neighborhood and watch rockets launched by Russian troops uh, streak through the night sky. And that was the moment he decided, uh, he told the reporter, why do I need these things if they're just sitting in my safe? I have to sell them to show people leadership, to help my Ukrainian people to live better and to help kids. Because his dream was this. He said, we want to restore gyms because the Russian army bombed more than 100 schools. In our country, well, they need a lot of money to fix the schools, but Sports gyms are going to be last in the line to fix. And in Ukraine, we have winter. And kids need to play inside. So that's his interview. His story astounded me for two reasons. First, very much unlike the rich barn guy from last week's parable, Medvedenko decided to clean out his safe because someone else needed what he had. And second reason it struck me as astounding, it was here he was standing in the middle of a place where people were justifiably afraid, even afraid for their lives. And he not only had hope, but he thought of something to do that would give others hope as well. Now, Medvedenko certainly does not know how Ukraine's story is going to turn out. Hope never knows for sure. But hope is powerful. And hope is contagious. And hope is what gives us the ability just to keep putting one step ahead of the other. And instead of despairing, hope opens our eyes to the needs of others around us so that we can give them a reason to hope as well. You know what? I like would like to think that, that our resolve here at Peace to reach out to the kids in our neighborhood, to reach out with events, to uh, soon provide a place for them to play indoors, a place uh, for which we're going to break ground in three weeks, is going to give them and, and their families another reason for hope. But there's a second part of the gospel that was read that I just can't let stand there without saying something about it. Because I know I have heard, and I'm sure there have been thousands of preachers who have used this text of Jesus coming like a thief in the night <clears throat> to instill fear and their listeners to motivate their listeners to repent because, after all, no one knows the hour of Jesus' return. I think my, my siblings brought home a t-shirt from the Caribbean ones that said, uh, uh, Jesus is coming, everybody look busy. So, uh, but it, it plays on that fear that, boy, you know, we don't want to get caught uh, when that thief comes in the night. But those sermons have totally ignored the verses immediately preceding it. Verses which, which set that story in hope rather than fear. Because if you remember what was read, Jesus never threatened his followers. Instead, he's like with words like, you better watch out. You better not let me find you sitting around. Instead, he said words of blessing. He said that those who are looking for the master to show up in their world are going to be blessed. Now, that's a big difference. Be, be, you know, a promise to be blessed rather than a threat for punishment. 
And what Jesus, he was using a metaphor that would have been common in those days, the metaphor of a, of a household with servants, servants who were waiting for their master to return home after a wedding banquet, which was running late into the night. And maybe they were up waiting for him out of their sense of duty. Maybe it was out of a sense of love for him. However it was, they didn't want him to have to come home to a dark house with everybody sleeping. Instead, they wanted to make sure the, the lights were on and they were there at the door to welcome him home and uh, even fix him something, for eat, uh, uh, something to eat. That's the metaphor. But the twist in the story is exactly where the blessing is to be found. Because when the master gets home, everyone who is up and waiting for him, he invites them to sit down at the table in the kitchen and he whips up an omelet and he feeds all of his staff at 4 a.m. It's an instant party in the middle of the night. And those who maybe were still in bed sleeping, they, they missed out on the party, but that doesn't mean he loved them any less. They just missed out on something pretty great. So the lesson to be learned here is that those who are looking for Jesus to actually come and break into their world, to arrive when the night is the darkest into their lives, those people... They won't be disappointed because Jesus does come and Jesus blesses them. Now, whenever we come to worship, we become those people, people who are looking for Jesus to come break into our world, to break into our lives, to give us a reason to have a party at 4 a.m. in the morning when the night is the darkest to give us a reason for hope. And I know it won't be lost on any of us when in a few moments we are going to be invited by the, our Lord and our friend to a meal that he is personally serving up for us. Because there is hope in every piece of bread and there is hope in every sip of wine or juice have no fear, little flock, said Jesus. Though the reasons for our fear are many, the hope that Jesus wants us to experience has the power to disarm the fear that cripples us. It's the hope we have that we have someone who knows us, who cares for us so much that he will show up in the middle of the night and bless us. And take care of us. We're never alone. He is our reason for hope. Which is good. Because fear and hope do often show up at the same time. But we, will, we get to choose which, on which we will act upon. I mean the events around us might be beyond our control. But Jesus has promised to be there with what we need to get through the hour, to get through the day. And however that day turns out in the end, our reason for hope never changes. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all our understanding keep our hearts and our minds focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's sing.
I am part of the LONC committee. Our purpose is to love our neighbors and connect with our neighbors here at Peace. And the past few weeks, we've been getting together on Tuesday nights. And for an hour, we spend time playing um, chalk, bubbles, uh, games, uh, different activities. This last week, we had the police department and the fire department there for National Night Out. And I just think that God is working, the Holy Spirit is working in this um, by us showing up and not knowing that first week when we did this, if we would have any kids show up. And that first week we had 20 to 25 kids that just came and there is a need and it's right here in our parking lot where we can see making those connections and, and God is telling us that there's people that need us and that we can be helpful to them. We have kids that are standing and even families that are standing on the sidewalks waiting for that seven o'clock time to hit so that they can come over and play with us. And we've had several kids that yell at eight o'clock, I'll be back next week. They need to know that we care about them and that we connect with them. And we go home at night just thinking, wow, that was quite the experience to just be able to meet our neighbors, um, not our neighbors at our house, but our neighbors at our church that we care deeply about just as much as we do at home. We are so grateful for all of you who have supported the many different ways that we can love our neighborhood kids, from the basketball drive that we have done to showing up to be a part of their lives or for your prayer support. At this time, we support the ministries here at Peace with our giving jar, the baskets that are being passed around, and of course, giving options that are online as well. At this time, I would like to invite all students who are headed out to college in the coming days, weeks, and months to come forward here to the front, along with family members or friends or loved ones who are here today for a blessing. We want to acknowledge you, to pray for you, and to offer you a reminder that we will always be here to support you as your church family wherever you go. So come on up and join me here. 
Um, you as a congregation, I will invite you to join me as a part of the blessing. We'll have the words come up on the screen. Thank you. I know it's always difficult when you're the only one up here, but I like to remember our baptism. Another time where you're very special coming up in front, where you remember the promises of Jesus Christ. So if you would like to turn and face the congregation, and congregation, let's share this blessing. Holy God, please bless and protect these young people, your students, as they prepare to begin another year of their education. Keep them encouraged and full of hope. Fill them with focus so they know success. Grant them a mind of wisdom and truth in Christ. Stir up in them a heart and a passion for justice, and give them your light to shine for all the world. God, we give you thanks for each of these young adults and how you have provided for them all of their lives. We thank you for giving them means for continuing education. We thank you for teachers, coaches, and mentors supporting them. We thank you for family and friends who walk with them. We thank you for a community of faith who holds them dear. Bless all of those whom they leave behind. Give them peace in this time of transition. And guide them always home to your precious keeping. So that they might know your mercy and love in Jesus Christ. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As a part of this blessing, we want to share a gift with you. I want you to pick out one that you like here. These are some of our prayer squares that are made by our quilters here at Peace. And as you take this with you, you can put it in your pocket, have you with you wherever you go, as a reminder of the warmth and care from this community here, who will always be praying for you and blessing you from a distance and excited for your return to hear how your life is going. So congregation, let's have a time of applause to celebrate. We continue our service now with our prayers of the church. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us draw near the Holy One in a time of trust and prayer, responding to each petition with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Lord God, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your own Holy Spirit. Equip your flock to speak your words of promise and hope in the midst of all fear and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards. In places of strife, bring your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look to all who await your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace all those who cry out to you. Today we pray for those members from peace who are hospitalized, having surgery or ill, including Emma Nye, Brandy Hummel, Rosalie Ovenden, Kay Bettine, Gail Carbo, Brent Batterman, Joanne Batterman, and Doug Knold. We also pray for extended family, Dennis Zoss, father of Amanda Negebauer, and Bruce Mark, brother of Mylan. We pray today for members with cancer and chronic illness, including Sally Mueller, Adam Case, Lynette Christie, Jill Melchert, Sandy Beckman, Cheryl McGraw, Lowell Stelter, Carrie Marty, Jeremy Josephson, Kelsey Hoffman, Judy Kirkman, Emma Nye, Christina Hoff, Sarah Hansen, Keith Soderquist, and Christy Barcher. And today we also remember all of those who are in hospice care, including Betty Johnson, mother of Kathy Johnson, and Norma Marion, wife of Jerry and mother of Dan. 
Help us always to trust in your promise, Jesus Christ, and not be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd and our Savior. Amen. And just as we remember all of these in our prayers, we also remember the night in which he was betrayed. When our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, he gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Take this and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember also after supper when he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take this and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Keeping in mind that great love and promise of Jesus Christ, we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. Jesus Christ invites you here.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you always and keep you in his peace. Amen. We have some mission opportunities. We've been collecting diapers for necessities for years, but this month we're doing a special diaper drive for Volunteers of America, an organization that serves new moms with limited incomes and multiple needs. If you'd like to help bring in newborn or size one diapers and wipes anytime in August. What a glorious few weeks it's been playing outside in the parking lot and getting to know our neighborhood kiddos. We have one more neighborhood night out this Tuesday. Join us for an hour of fun, or if you're not available, just keep all the kids in your prayers as we continue to look for more ways to connect with and love them. Peace is a caring community that loves to walk beside all people, including those who find themselves in need. Join us for the Feeding South Dakota distribution this Monday evening. It's great to be able to give away food, but just as meaningful to show love to all of God's children through conversation and personal connections. And in addition to blessing our neighbors, let's also bless one another. Next Sunday, following lawn chair worship, we'll have a short service of pet blessing in our parking lot. Bring your furry friends on leashes or in carriers per city ordinance for some treats and some reminders of God's love for all living things. The following weekend, everyone headed back to school, no matter what age you might be, is invited to bring their backpack or bag for a blessing as you prepare to start another year of learning and fun. There's nothing quite as exciting as receiving your very own brand new Bible. And we hope all three-year-olds and fourth graders can be part of our upcoming milestone events where you not only learn more about God's word found in scripture, but also prepare to take home your own brand new Bible that you'll also use in classes this fall. Sign up online. I know that's a lot, but I have just one more big thing. Mark your calendars for Sunday, August 28th, because we're having a groundbreaking for Peace Next. This huge celebration will start with lawn chair worship outside, followed by food, inflatables, games, and of course, some digging. More details to come, so keep an eye out for those. We have so many wonderful ways to get involved here at Peace, and so we hope that you can be a part of those when available. Now at this time, let us rise and bless one another with our prayer of good courage. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as you go out to face many trials and tensions, know also that God's loving care and attention goes with you. Amen. Thanks be to God. We sing our sending hymn. 